When comparing the Epic of the Gilgamesh with that of the Genesis account of the Flood, one of the first obvious areas of comparison is the nature of the two different boats. And both texts do contain boats, and actually both texts do mention the fact that pitch was involved in the construction of these two different vessels. On page 109 of the Epic of Gilgamesh, it says, In the first light of dawn, all my household gathered round me. The children brought pitch, and the men whatever was necessary. This use of pitch is also found in Genesis chapter 6, verse 14. You will make rooms in the ark, and will pitch it inside and outside with pitch. But what about other aspects of the text concerning this boat? Are there similarities between the material that's used, the shape of the boat, the number of decks on the vessels? Well, no, there is not any similarity in those areas. If you look on page 108 of the Epic of Gilgamesh, we learn that there was a council of gods and they agreed to exterminate mankind. And one particular god named Ea speaks to Utnapishtim and warns him in a dream. Now, Utnapishtim is the Noah figure in the Epic of Gilgamesh. And Ea says at one point, He whispered their words to my house of reeds. The reason why it's important that we know that Utnapishtim's house is made of reeds is because Ea is going to instruct Utnapishtim to tear down his own house and take those reeds and use it as the primary material for the ark that he's going to build. The text goes on to say, Reed house, reed house, wall, O oh wall, hearken, reed house, wall reflect. O oh man, Ashurapak, son of Ubar Tutu, tear down your house and build a boat. Abandon possessions and look for life. Despise worldly goods and save your soul alive. And yet, whenever we look in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 14, we find what the material was that Noah was instructed to build his ark with, and it wasn't reeds. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. That's what Genesis says. But what about the shape or the length of the two vessels? Well, Ea goes on and speaks to Utnapishtim further about the dimensions for the vessel. These are the measurements of the bark as you shall build her. Let her beam equal her length. Let her deck be roofed like the vault that covers the abyss. And on page 109 we see further details. The ground space was one acre. One side of the deck measured 120 cubits, making a square. So Utnapishtim's vessel was in the shape of a square. Well, was Noah's? No, it wasn't. If you look in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 15, the text says, And this is how you will make it. The length of the ark, 300 cubits. The breadth of it, 50 cubits. And the height of it, 30 cubits. And it's interesting to note that these measurements, this rectangular kind of shape, is what you find in vessels today. In seaworthy vessels that you can see on the ocean today, they are in a rectangular shape. And yet, Utnapishtim was told to build a vessel that was a square shape. But what about the number of decks or stories in these two vessels? Again, on page 109, it says, I built six decks below, seven in all. I divided them into nine sections with bulkheads between. Well, Noah was told to build three stories in his particular vessel. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 16, You will make a door for the ark, and you will finish it to a cubit upward, and you will set the door of the ark in the side of it, and you will make it with lower, second, and third stories. So, in all three of these cases, the shape of the vessel, the material used, the number of decks, there is no similarity. And so there's no reason to believe that the author of Genesis had to rely on the Epic of Gilgamesh to complete his text. But what about the amount of time it took for Utnapishtim and Noah to build their respected vessels? Well, if you look in the Epic of Gilgamesh, we find that an extremely short period of time was necessary to complete his vessel. One of these sentences we've already looked at on page 109. I'll read it again. In the first light of dawn, all my household gathered round me. The children brought pitch and the men whatever was necessary. This is the first light of dawn after Ea warned Utnapishtim of the coming flood. And it says in the next sentence, On the fifth day I laid the keel and the ribs, then I made fast the planking. The text goes on and speaks about 
people who are carrying oil in baskets, about shipwrights that are doing different things. And near the end of the paragraph, individuals are drinking wine and celebrating like it's a New Year's festival. And at the end of the paragraph, we learn how long it took for Utnapishtim and the rest to build his ark. On the seventh day, the boat was complete. So Utnapishtim tore down his own house made of reeds and used that material to build a vessel with the help of others in only seven days. Now, if you look in the Genesis text, there is a mention of seven days at one point. It's at Genesis chapter 7, verse 4. For after seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights, and I will blot from the face of the ground every living thing that I have made. But this is speaking of the number of days right before the flood comes. Is there any place in Genesis where we can get like a time indicator of the possible amount of time that Noah had to build his vessel? Well, yes, we do have that kind of information. If you look in Genesis chapter 5, verse 32, it says, And Noah was 500 years old, and Noah fathered Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And if you continue on and look in chapter 7, verse 6, two verses after what we just read, we can see the age of Noah right before the flood. It says, And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. So, Noah had perhaps a hundred years to build his ark, but let's say that he only had 50 years to build his vessel. Even if he only had 50 years to build his vessel, that is a far more believable amount of time to build a vessel that is going to be used for that particular purpose, to save him and his family and those various animals. And so, because of this incredible contradiction, the seven days versus, say, 50 to 100 years of time, it shows us why the Epic of Gilgamesh was not needed to complete the text in Genesis regarding the boat. And so, next time we'll take a look at the animals in these two different texts and see whether or not they agree or disagree. But so far, we see that they do not agree whenever it comes to the boat. Thank you very much, and have a nice day.